<laughs> well, it's really great to be back. We were here in October. Does anyone remember us being here? Doing good. Any visitors today? Okay, very good. Great. Well, a lot has happened since we've been here last. Um, we had our baby in Denver. I mean, the baby was conceived when we were here, so we're always going to love this church. Um, <laughs> Baby's due in 82 days, praise God. And uh, since then, we've been everywhere, you name it, coast to coast, everywhere. <laughs> and uh, as most of you know, what our ministry does is we preach the Word of God as the sermon. The very Word of God is the sermon. And this morning, I'd like to do Genesis chapters 1 through 11. Not only is it the foundation of our faith, everything we believe on is built upon this. But it tells us who we are, where we came from, the redemption that comes from the shedding of an innocent animal, uh, Cain and Abel, uh, men who lived to be a thousand years old, uh, the flood, uh, the different languages that came, etc., etc. But what's interesting is that the author of Hebrews, whoever he may be, uh, in chapter 11, which you are all familiar with at Hall of Faith, he sees Genesis 1 through 11 through the lens of faith. And that's how I'd like to approach this today. And you're probably familiar with these verses, right? By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch was taken and he was not found. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, prepared an ark for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. So I'd like to speak that as a sermon this morning, and after that, just talk a little bit about uh, what we've been doing. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. In the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called these seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed was in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply upon the earth. In the evening, in the morning, were the fifth day. And God said, 
Let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after their kinds, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after their kind, cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after their kinds, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for food, and to every beast of the field, and to every fowl of the air, and to every living thing that moveth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. In the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is, of which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good, and there is dallium in the onyx stone. The name of the second river is Gihon, that is, of which compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. The name of the third river is Hadakal, that is, of which goeth towards the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a help suitable for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to every fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help suitable for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh, and said thereof, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. 
and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, and your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves clothing. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat? And the man said, The woman! Whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And it came to pass in process of time that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. 
And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flocks and of the fats thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and he slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me out of the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, Lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city. And he called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, Irad begot Mehujal, Mehujal begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal. He's the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He's the father of all such as handle the harp and the organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal, came an instructor of every artificer of brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal came was Namna. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again. She bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, She hath appointed me another seed, instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enosh. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him male and female, created he them and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he begot Seth were 800 years and he begot sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. And Seth lived after he begot Enosh 807 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years. And he died. And Enosh lived 90 years and begot Canaan. And Enosh lived after he begot Canaan 815 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enosh were 905 years. And he died. And Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalel, and Canaan lived after he begot Mahalalel 840 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years. And he died. And Mahalalel lived 65 years and begot Jared, and Mahalalel lived after he begot Jared 830 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years. And 
he died. And Jared lived 162 years, and he begot Enoch, and Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years, and he got sons and daughters, and all the days of Jared were 962 years. And he died. And Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah. 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. And Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begot Lamech 782 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. And he died. And Lamech lived 182 years and he begot a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This thing shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. And Lamech lived after he begot Noah 595 years, and he got sons and daughters, and all the days of Lamech were 777 years. And he died. And Noah was 500 years old. And Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days will be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things and fowl of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But... Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, and lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, Thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee, and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after their kinds. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according unto all that God commanded him, so did he. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou, and all thy house unto the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by twos, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and his female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. 
for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that God commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with them into the ark because of the waters of the flood of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean and of fowls and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after their kind, all the cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after their kind, every fowl after their kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth. And the waters increased and bare up the ark. And it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died, and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground. Both man, cattle, creeping thing, fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from off the earth. Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark, and the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days, and God remembered Noah, and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually, and at the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from the face of the ground. But she returned unto him into the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. And then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he said yet another seven days and sent forth the dove which came to him in the evening with an olive leaf plucked off in her mouth, so Noah knew that the waters were abated from the face of the ground. And he stayed yet another seven days and sent forth a dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, was the earth dry. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, of the fowl and of the cattle and of the beasts of the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl, every creeping thing went forth out of the ark, after their kinds. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the 
Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand. Are they delivered? Every moving thing that liveth shall be food for you, even as the green herb have given you all things, but flesh, which is the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require it. At the hand of every beast will I require it. At the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God may be man and you, be you fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his son, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl and of the cattle and of the beast of the earth, from all that go out to the ark, to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them went the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be a husbandman. And he planted a vineyard, drank the wine, and was drunk. And he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backwards and covered their father's nakedness. And their faces went backwards and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan! A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. And all the days of Noah were 950 years. And he died. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth. Gomer, Magog, Mania, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Rifta, and Togarmah. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodami. By these were the islands of the Gentiles divided after their lands, after their tongues, in their families, and in their nations. The sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Thot, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabtap, Rama, and Sabtak. And the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dadan, and Cush. He got Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, Even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalna, and the land of Shinar. And he went forth into Assyria and builded Nineveh. 
and the city Rehovot and Kala, and resin between Nineveh and Kala, the same as a great city. And Mizraim begot Ludim, Anumim, Leobim, Nerturim, Pathusim, Kasmim, out of whom came the Philistines, and the Capturims, and Canaan begot Sidon, his firstborn, and Hath, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvidite, and the Zemurite, and the Hamatite. And afterwards, when the families of the Canaanites spread abroad, and the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abma, and Zeobim, even unto Elisha, these are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born, and the children of Shem. Elam, Asher, Arphaxa, Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Olaz, and Hall, and Gather, and Mash, and Arphaxa begot Salah, and Salah begot Eber, and unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided. And his brother's name was Yoktan. And Yoktan begot Elmodad, Shalev, Hazamabeth, and Jera, Hadru, Uzal, and Dikla, Ovo, Abimah, Shafer, Ofer, Havilah, Yovah. All these were the sons of Yoktan. And their dwelling was from Mesha, as thou goest unto Safar, a mountain of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, and in their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, and in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime and they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they all have one language. And this they begin to do. Now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth and they left off. To build the city, therefore is the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The word of the Lord. Alright, friends, we saw the faith of creation, we saw the faith of Abel, we saw the faith of Enoch, we saw the faith of Noah. You know that verse related to Enoch says, um, without faith... It is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And as you know, Corinthians says that these are examples given to us. Faith. Trust. So I just have one question for us. What are we trusting Jesus to do? That only God can do. Because it's written somewhere, you do not receive because you do not ask. And somewhere else it says, what manner of man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask? What are we asking Jesus to do? That only God can do. Amen. Well, with a few minutes left, maybe one of those things is memorizing some Bible verses. <laughs> Has anyone memorized anything since I've been here last? One, two, three, four. Great. Very good. Very good. Well, in short, since in Sunday school I'm not teaching about Bible memory, I'm teaching about the, uh, the archaeology of Israel. I was able to live there the last four years and do, did a master's degree in it. So it's going to be a 1,500 slide presentation on what we found in Israel and how it relates to the land of the Bible. But nevertheless, when I was there, I, I really learned how to memorize. Um, as most of you know, in the West, we live in a 
And it's just going faster, a wireless, copy, paste, Facebook, tweet, file, forget world, where we just don't need to record anything in our memories, per se. I mean, we're so blessed, but it's a double-edged sword to have an abundance of Bibles and to have the Bible available on our phone, even. And as most of you know, in the land in the time of the Bible, they, well, they didn't have that luxury. I mean, it was probably very rare to go into a home in ancient Israel, the time of Jesus, a middle class kind of home, and find all 39 scrolls of the Tanakh written on animal skin. I mean, that's just not going to happen, probably. So, if they wanted to memorize in antiquity, I discovered that there's probably at least three different ways. Maybe some of these ways can help you if you're interested. The first is by hearing. And this is the most ancient of ways. Uh, the Bible was written in an oral world. And God said, right? Like you just heard. Um, when Isaac is tricked by Jacob, remember when he gives the Jacob the blessing instead of Esau? Well, his culture would not allow him to take back what he said. I mean, once he said it, it's in stone. It's not like, oh, I didn't mean it, sorry, you know, it's too late. A Balaam's mouth is shut, so he can't speak, because the power is in the Word. Um, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The soldier of God. Everything you're wearing is defensive except the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that word for word in Greek is rima which means it's the spoken word. So he's fighting, but he has nothing in his hand. It's, it's coming out of the mouth, proceeding from the heart. If Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. He quotes scripture. Same thing in Revelation 1.3. Most of the translations say, blessed is he who reads. But a better translation is, blessed is he who reads aloud. It's the same word, rima. So in a really oral world. Now, of course, they would memorize the Bible in Hebrew or Aramaic generally speaking. And it's much easier to memorize than the original because there's so many built-in mnemonics and memory hooks and word plays and acrostics and etc. etc. Now, I have a friend in Fort Wayne, Indiana, who was really inspired by hearing us and he wanted to get serious about memorizing God's Word. And he has an hour commute every day. And so what he decided to do is, for part of the time, I'm going to turn off the ball game, and I'm just going to listen to a half a chapter of Romans or whatever at a time. He just recorded it on his cassette or iPod or whatever, and he just listened to it over and over. And it took him about a year and a half of driving to work, but he memorized all of Romans while driving to work. I mean, what a fantastic way to redeem the time. Now... Look, at, I'm like him and like you. I also have a life. <laughs> it's not like I'm just like studying all day. <laughs> I do the same things you do. <laughs> but I just carve out 30 to 45 minutes a day to memorize God's Word. And this is the second way, the way I do it, by writing it out. I don't know about you, but I need all the help I can get. Uh, it's really hard for me to memorize, guys. It takes me at least a month to do one chapter. It's not like, oh, well, that's Tom, and he's just a robot or something, you know. And that's not the case. I trust you, it's not. <laughs> it takes you, like, at least a month. And so what you heard this morning was basically a year's worth of work, you know. And I do it by writing it out, and that's the second way. But the key is to write it out and say it at the same time. Our Bibles, where is it? I lose it all the time. Our Bibles are printed or formatted in a way that is not helpful or conducive to memorizing. The only portions that are are those that are in a poetical genre. Like Genesis 3.15, it might be printed different or formatted different in your Bible. And when it's in stanza form or in quatrains, it's much, much easier to memorize. Uh, there's an ancient technique that says um, an eye's glance you write up, when you're writing it out from memory, and it's eight words or less. And it's what you can go like this and kind of just keep for a couple seconds in the short term. It's the same thing on the highways, on 25 or whatever. When you're driving, you'll see the big billboards. Every time, I, I guarantee you, there's eight words or less on each line. Because they're not dumb. 
right? They know that when you drive by that, they want you to look at it, consider it, put it in that short-term memory, etc. So writing it out and saying it when you write it. And the third and final way is to read it, but the key is to read it aloud. Now, nobody in the West really reads aloud anymore in public. Not even really in private. If you do, you think they're kind of crazy. Actually, it kind of saved me once. I was in Mexico City. I was being saved, but I was walking to my hotel, and there were four thugs hot in my heels. And I was reviewing. I was in 2 Kings 9, the death of Jezebel. And I just turned up the volume a little bit. And I just turned around, and I said, Throw her down! And they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the walls and on the horses, and he throwed her under her butt. And he just ran away. It could help but reading it aloud. Now, we do have ancient sources that tell us that if you're going to memorize, if it's all possible, the rest of your life, only use the same Bible. Because you know that old Bible where John is or where James is or whatever, that even if we don't try, the format is imprinted on our minds or hearts. Now, whether you memorize it by writing it or by hearing it or by reading it, the key to, look at, obeying it's the hardest part. Everybody knows that. But getting it in you is pretty hard too. But the way to keep it, once you've memorized it, is oral repetition. you got to move the mouth. You have to say it aloud. That's so much more beneficial. Because your mouth has a memory. It really does. And it's smart. It's very intelligent. Saying it aloud. Well, if any of you decide to memorize a short book or something, please let me know. It would be a great encouragement. If you just did one verse a week, by Christmas you can have almost Jonah memorized. Or Titus. That'd be pretty amazing. Just a verse a week. Just a verse a week. Well, honey, you want to come up front as we close real quick? My wife lost her voice. We looked all over the house and we cannot find it. So, she can't speak. <laughs> but what you can do is have a baby. It's due in 82 days. And, uh, thank you. And, um, since we've been here last, I mean, we've been in like 25 states, and um, this is what we do. And um, we hope that you were blessed today by hearing God's word, and that you were inspired to memorize it. And I hope that some of my instruction uh, helped you in that cause. Um, on the back table, there's a desk with some books on it that we wrote. I wrote. Uh, this is a commentary, verse by verse, on Genesis 1 to 11. Seem to like a, a cultural, like a Middle Eastern lens. Like, for example, why is it evening morning? Not morning evening. Well, evening morning seems to be a, a thread that goes throughout the whole Bible. You have, a, at the end, even you have the tribulation, you have the darkness, and then you have the light. Um, in Genesis 5, you have the names Adam to Noah. Adam means what? Man. And Noah means Anybody? comfort or rest. But if you take those ten names, it says man, Adam. Seth appointed, man appointed mortal, sorrowful, the blessed Lord shall come down, teaching his death shall bring despair and comfort or rest. That's what the names mean. That's pretty awesome. Especially if you're witnessing to a religious Jew. 